Yep, literally. I know, I was like, I'm, I plugged my curling hair in so I can potentially curl my hair before I have to go. And I was like, I'm going to come back with curled hair. And they're going to be like, <laughs> or like half curled, half not. Like, oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> Anyways. Welcome back to episode back. 71. 71, holy fucking shit. I chose this topic just because we've talked, we've used this verbiage a lot when talking mm-hmm. about making changes in your life, right? And mm-hmm. I think- Sometimes people forget that there's actual states or stages of change. And so that's Mm -hmm. what this week's episode is about. There are excited. How many of them? Two, six, five, six, six. Yes. Right. I couldn't count because the font was really small and my glasses on. So I was like, is there five, six? I can't see. There are six. And now Mari's counting to verify. Uh, yeah, there are six, but this graphic that they have is five. That's why I was like, wait, what? This pie chart. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> right? Because I was like, uh. What's not in there? Though? Oh, pre-contemplation. Oh, okay. That because makes that's sense. like, you're not ready to change yet. That's yeah, you're I mean. not jumping in yet. You're kind of doing the double dutch. When I learned about states of change, it was in regards to um, substance use and like quitting oh yeah 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 I I do remember that in some of my I don't even know what the classes are called anymore but I'll just call them the AODA classes um because I did I had an AODA certification oh I did not have a certification I just I had to take a class in grad school I thought after I got out of um undergrad I went to Gateway and out of the it's a eight class course for the certificate my bachelor's wiped six of the classes. So I was like, mm. shit, I'll get it. Cause I thought that I wanted to work with addiction originally. Mm-hmm. I really did. And then I was like, no, oh, no for me. No, I need a win. I need it's wins. A no for me. And the people yeah. that do it, you are a special a phenomenal. Human being. You and are that's, phenomenal. That's just not me. That's just not me. But I, yeah, I need wins. Yes. The states or stages of change can be applied yes. to literally anything. Anything yeah. that you want to change in your life. Yes. So we just want to go back and forth like we usually do. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I will start. Stage Over. one, which while it is stage one, it's also not like the starting process of change, right? If you are in the mm-hmm. pre-contemplation, pre-contemplation state or stage, you're not seriously thinking about changing anything. Mm-hmm. Like you're not even contemplating change. You're just like, you're there, Right. You don't focus your attention on quitting or discussing the bad habit or behavior or reaction, like whatever it is that you're trying to work on. It's not even at the forefront of your brain that like this needs to change. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, And this is like us just talking about this. I've been using pre-contemplation state differently. Really? I've been, I've been using it or viewing it as the contemplation state. Oh yeah. But really the contemplation state, which I I do like, if you, if you like break down the pre contemplate, it makes sense. But like in my mind, I was just kind of viewing as this is the point of like the, like double Dutch, do I want to change? Don't I, but that's the contemplation state. But anyways. Mm -hmm. Yes. So pre contemplation means it's not even at the forefront of your brain to change this behavior or whatever it is that you're not sure about changing it. Sure situation in your life. So then we go to stage two, which is contemplation. So in the contemplation state, people are more aware of the personal consequences of their bad habits and will spend time thinking about their problem or the situation that they want to change, right? So although they're able to consider the possibility of changing, they're ambivalent about it. Ambivalence is just this kind of like um, both sides, this yin and yang, this um, thinking about like a seesaw or a teeter-totter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, balancing up and down, not sure. So in this I didn't, it says in the second paragraph, teeter totter. <laughs> I'm fucking on it, man. If you ever thought about taking ADHD meds, I'm telling you, go get some ADHD meds. Cause I took mine early today because I have to work today and I do a recording. I feel like I'm a fighter. Good. Anyways, so stuff's so like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, anyways, you're weighing pros and cons of quitting, quitting or modifying your behavior or situation that you're in. So you can think about negative aspects, but you're also weighing the positive aspects um, or the positive things that it brings you. So you may doubt the long-term benefits associated with the change or quitting the behavior and outweigh um, the short-term costs 
or the, the long-term benefits will, will outweigh the short-term costs, but you teeter, you go back and forth between that, right? Because our society is based off of immediate gratification. Mm-hmm. And if I tell you in the long-term, like cigarette smoking, right? Yeah. I tell you in the long-term, like your lung function is going to be so great. Um, but the first couple of days are just going to be touch and go in those first couple of days that craving outweighs the, Oh, mm-hmm. eventually get my lungs back. Like it just doesn't, yep. you're like, I don't give a fuck. So this state may take a couple of weeks or as long as a lifetime to get through the contemplation stage. Um, some people think and think and think about giving up their bad habit and may never do that. They may just die in this state, which is completely okay. Um, and yeah, and so they're more likely in this state to be open to potentially hearing about pros and cons, maybe from other people in their family or in their circle about their bad, bad habit behavior, what it's costing them. They're, they're stepping into that, like, okay, I might want to change versus the pre-contemplation. I don't think that they're open to talking about what they're doing to anybody. It's like being set in your ways, right? Of like, I don't want to hear it. Like, don't no, this works just fine for me. And it's like, well, does it? (laughs) Is it? Because we can do a behavior chain analysis and I can promise you it's not working. Yes. So stage three is preparation or determination. So you've made a commitment to change. I think it would have been easier if we thought of like an example to go along with these states of change, but it's fine. Let's go through them and then we can have an example afterwards and just kind of walk fast, walk not fast, but walk through it easier. So when you're in this stage or state you've made the decision to say like, I can't keep doing this. Like this does not work for me. Something needs to change. Like there is a willingness Mm -hmm. to change that behavior habit, whatever it may be. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas like the stage before there might've, well, two stages before. So the pre-contemplated, it's a willfulness of like, Nope, I ain't changing shit. I ain't doing nothing about it. Right. Right. This is where you gather information and educate yourself and what that change is going to look like. Maybe how, quote unquote, how long does it take? So for example, when I quit smoking, they say in the first three months, if you make it the first 90 days, there's a higher mm-hmm. chance that you will not go back to smoking. So in my mm-hmm. brain, I was like, okay, if I make it to three months, I'm good. Well, mm-hmm. now it's been 13 years. So like, right. you know, but that's not to say that that happens for everybody. Right. But if you had this idea in your brain of like, there's an end in sight of this Mm -hmm. kind of miserable feeling, Mm -hmm. it feels less daunting. Have you ever in that 13 years had a cigarette? Hell motherfucking no. Cause I know myself. And if I did, I'd be like, man, I miss this shit. (laughs) Honestly, dude, especially in summer, dude, smoking cigarettes in the summer while drinking was like my fucking favorite. Now I don't do either one of them. So it's fine. But like, like, what? For real. Sounds awful. No, it was great. I mean, the drinking sounds fine if you're outside, a little glass of wine, really great. enjoying the sun. Anyways, stage four, action or willpower. So this is the stage where people believe that they have the ability to change their behaviors and or the habit or situation that they're in. This is can be the shortest stage, usually is the shortest stage. So sometimes as little as like, that's my decision Mm -hmm. and, or sometimes like six months. Right. But realistically, these are where people are really into it. Um, so this stage depends on the person's own willpower. So they're making over efforts to quit or change the behavior at a greater and are at a greater risk for relapse. So mentally, they review their commitment to themselves and develop a plan to deal with it. So realistically, this is like where a vision board or writing goals and gratitudes would come in handy because, again, it's just that reaffirmation over and over and over again as to why you want to change your behavior or you want to um, move away from the situation that you're in. Or even having like a relapse prevention plan. And this doesn't have to involve drugs, right? But a relapse prevention plan in terms of, okay, if I react negatively and I am aggressive or passive aggressive, my plan is to come back and fucking apologize and take Mm -hmm. responsibility, right? And like having that in mind of this is what I'm going to do if a slip up happens. What's happening? It's you. Oh, you're waiting for me to go. I thought you had something else yeah. to say. No. <laughs> I was like, is she thinking 
about like is she paying attention to anything that I'm saying or what the fuck is happening? I was like, I lost her. I lost her. Okay. No, I, I thought it was a solid point, and I was just waiting for you to go. And but then, like while I was waiting for you to go, I was looking ahead because I was like, yeah, I was supposed to be action mode part, and then it says stage five, but then it stops, and I was like, but there's six stages. Where's the next stage? And then I started panicking. But the ne- the stage that they want you to talk about is relapse. But obviously, they're not going to make that a step because nobody yes. wants it to be a step. But I literally was like, oh, my God, did I did I literally skip a step? Did I fuck us up? And then you're just sitting over there like, this bitch, have a thought in your head? What's going on? Anyways, whatever. Okay. So stage yeah. five <laughs> is maintenance. So that is being able to avoid temptations or returning to that previous behavior or habit or whatever it may be, right? You are maintaining those changes that you've made. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it in terms of like weight loss, right? Maintenance is almost harder than the loss part of it, right? Like you're actively working to lose all the weight or to change your body composition or whatever. And then to maintain those behaviors can be very fucking hard and people will relapse into binge eating or whatever it may be. So the maintenance part is no joke, right? Like you Mm -hmm. have to take those habits, behaviors, changes, and be consistent with them, Mm -hmm. just like you are in anything else in your life. In order for changes to stick, you have to be consistent. That is key. Absolutely. I think it's Like that's Yeah. Yeah. It's setting, it's those little habits that you're setting yourself up for that eventually lead to that big change. And the consistency in that is key, right? If I'm sitting here laying down a brick path, I need to be consistent with my pattern and measurements because otherwise I literally have a path instead of going straight. It's just off to the side, wonky ass path that I'm like, well, now look at me. Yep. So the possibility of relapse is there, right? Nobody when, okay, that's an uh, overgeneralization. I would say it is hard to look at these stages of change and think, I'm never going to relapse. Sure. Never going to happen to me. I'm never going to use that bad behavior again. Why? Because uh, I don't need to. I'm going, I'm soaring to the moon. Here's the thing. When you are learning new behaviors and new ways to challenge um the situation you're in, your thought process, it's not going to look like a straight shot up. The trajectory isn't just like, oh, I'm, I win, I get an A. You're, there is going to be trial and error. Instead of labeling it as failure, label it as I'm learning lessons. This is a lesson. Mm-hmm. What did I gain from this, right? So if there is the, the, the relapse that does happen, what I think is unbelievably important is to step back and break down the situation the day before, two days before the relapse, and look at what potentially triggered the relapse. Mm-hmm. Was it um, like? Was it a person? Was it a place? Was it a smell? A sound? Was it uh, a negative mindset that just spiraled? Was it a relapse or was it a pause in your life? Sure. Right. Also, make sure that that's there too. Right. Because if I'm looking at somebody who's like, okay, I want to change. I want to have healthier eating habits. I want to do X, Y, Z. And then for some reason, their parents is in the hospital and they can't work out. They don't really have access to what they were eating and have to make some choices. Is that a relapse or is that just a pause, a neutrality in your life? Because the situation was out of your control. Mm -hmm. Depending, like, look at that. Like, sure, you could argue, well, you could leave and go get better food or blah, 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 blah. We don't know the situation. It's just hypothetical, right? Mm -hmm. So like, again, you know, figure it out. So what I think would be a great way to walk through these steps or stages, I should say, is when people come to therapy. Mm -hmm. That to me would be the easiest one and most applicable, right? So if we're looking at pre-contemplation, people are just (laughs) operating in shitty behaviors Mm -hmm. or passive behaviors or not not getting their needs met, not serving themselves, not Not paying attention. Not doing anything to make themselves feel better. Yeah. No, no showing up in authenticity, nothing, right? You're just kind of living your life and you're like, oh, this is as it's going to get. So then if you move towards the stage of contemplation, this is where maybe you're going on your insurance website and seeing if there are people who are in your coverage area. Your well, you, you have the provider. thought of like, maybe I need help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that's the first step is like, maybe I need to talk to somebody. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're having this thought process of like, okay, let's check it out. Is that even a possibility? Mm-hmm. Right. Which I think could definitely move into the preparation determination, preparation of I'm going to find a therapist. Here are the different websites I can go to to try to see phone calls and to me. Right. See if I like these people or if I don't. Stage four, setting the appointment, keeping the appointment and going to the appointment. Right. And continuing that path for the next up to six months, right? Like the therapy doesn't end at six months, but I'm talking in the stages, the um, time frame that they give, right? And then stage five is maintenance, right? You, you hit it hard in the beginning, really work on those skills, really work on trying and being able to um, understand that. I think there is the potential for relapse in this action willpower stage, right? Because if we're asking somebody to try a new skill and in their perception, you know, I didn't do it because I was too nervous, I was whatever, it's kind of like a mini relapse, right? We're just working with them consistently to build those, um, that self-efficacy, self-advocacy, confidence. you know, confidence to be able to do it, right? So I don't consider them relapse. It's just kind of like this um, edging along that we're, mm-hmm. we're just using them as building blocks and learning lessons as to what went well, what didn't go so well, and how do we adapt and overcome and then you go into maintenance, right? I have plenty of clients in maintenance where there's, they'll see me once a month, every six weeks, every two months. And I was going to say, I see like once a quarter, right? Yeah. Like twice a year, just as like yeah. a check-in to be like, hey, things are going good. Or hey, the past couple of months have been kind of shitty. Like, let's talk about it for sure. Right, right. And I definitely have had, I feel like quite a few people come back over these past two years of just like all of the changes in our society, our life, the pandemic, where it's just like, hey, you know, I'm doing okay. I just really want to check my mindset. Completely okay. Mm -hmm. Completely okay. Yep. So we talk about these stages a lot or these states, states, stages, doesn't matter what you use. It can be interchangeable. It was talked to me as the states have changed on our thing that we're looking off of. It's stages. Doesn't matter. The important part is, is that you are learning something from this, right? Understanding that it's not just, I have an idea. I'm fucking phenomenal at it. It's that it takes time to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And if you are in therapy and you are finding that quote unquote, it's not working, I would challenge you to go and look them up and see where you're at. Like, don't necessarily blame the therapy for not working. Maybe Mm -hmm. you aren't ready to address what the therapist is trying to address with you, right? Like Mm -hmm. nobody's going to force you to address anything you don't want to address, but if you brought it up to begin with, and then you're kind of shutting down, you need to ask yourself, like, am I ready to even tackle that yet? If not pick something else, Right. right? Like take some accountability for the changes that you want to make because we can't make them for you take all accountability Mm -hmm. for the changes that you want to make. I can give you the tools. I can't make you use them. Yep. So that, that is legit on you. And if you're taking accountability, if I'm the person who wanted to come to therapy, I don't feel like this therapist is teaching me anything. Leave. It's on. on, Yes, absolutely. Going and wasting your time or the therapist's time just to like, because you feel bad, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Please let me know if I'm not helping. Please. Literally, literally. I would love direction because I do not want to sit here and waste my fucking time Uh and or yours. Nope. (laughs) Fuck, we look like a bunch of idiots just sitting around (laughs) together. Like, do you you feel good about this? No. Do you? Not really. Like, okay, I'll see you next week. (laughs) What the fuck? Oh my God. Uh, anyways, you can find stuff at the spooky therapist. You can find me at B E A underscore 11. You can find us at rewriting her story podcast all on Instagram. Our email handle is rewriting her story podcast. Please email. Um, let us know any questions, concerns, or comments you have topics you want covered. We're always looking. Yes. Um, and then rewriting her story on YouTube, like subscribe all the things share with everybody literally we're gonna take over the world we should literally um get a clip of the pinky in the brain when he's like we're gonna do what we do every day do you ever do you ever watch that i didn't watch that when i was a kid oh my god all i watched was pinky in the brain i liked tiny tunes yeah that was okay (gasps) i'm just kidding it was good i literally loved all cartoons you can't like it, it would be hard pressed for me to find a cartoon that I didn't love when I was little, literally, because we one weren't allowed to watch TV, but then also we didn't have cable. So anytime I went somewhere where I was like, of course, I was like lucky. 
on um, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> but I'm hungry, mama. And just staring at the TV. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Anyways, we love you guys. We hope you have an amazing day, night, week, year, whatever. Whenever you're listening to this, we love you. Bye. Bye.